come out to play. Yeah, yeah, y ya mi un loro. Jahudi, also known as Carmen Mojica. I was born and raised in the Bronx with two Dominican parents. I spent 17 years of my life in the Bronx and then I went to SUNY New Paltz and I majored in television and radio productions and black studies. Um, along my journey in college, I started to get in touch with my African roots and um, being proud of the fact that I'm of Afro descent. And so um, I started a journey of like healing from having previously hated myself for being dark. And so um, black studies really helped that a lot. And um, towards the end of college, I decided to write about my experiences of like going through the journey of um, learning about being af from African descent and like what that means as a woman of color. And I decided to write a book called Hija de Mi Madre, which talks about how I used to um, be ashamed of being Af um, of African descent and all of the other issues that come with being a woman and how that's um, expounded those experiences of being a woman of color in this society as a Dominican woman. And so I wrote that book, I published it in 2009 and after that I also realized that um, women's, our, our health as women physically and psychologically and mentally was also neglected in the society and I had always had a passion to like help women heal physically so I decided to become a doula and I trained as a doula in 2010 and after that I realized that I wanted to be a midwife because I would be able to offer more of the things that I study, which is just women's health overall, like reproductive health and um, the childbearing year and like pre-childbearing and young women, older women. And so becoming a midwife would allow me to be able to offer that wider range of services. So um, I decided to um, come to El Paso specifically because I, I, my first language is Spanish. And so... I wanted to help women in speak and, and improve my own Spanish, medical Spanish, because that's not um, native to me, with um, other Latina women, especially here in the, um, next to the frontera um, between um, El Paso and Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. And it's been a wonderful experience. I'm almost done with my first quarter. What I also do when I have time, because I hardly have time here with like the shifts that I'm working at the clinic, helping the women give birth. I also write about um, how we have all of these cycles of trauma and um, internalized oppression that get passed on through our women because our communities are still holding that. And so that's the focus of my writing and my work. Um, and my way of taking direct action is by becoming a midwife. Pregnancy is a very special time in a woman's life and as a midwife I have the opportunity of being there where she's transforming from having, not having had children to having children or having another child or another member of their family come into their life. And so I have the opportunity to help them work through a lot of the memories and emotions that come up for women with regards to motherhood and their own mothers and their own childhoods and their own everything, every trauma, joy, memory comes up because she's being pumped with hormones and just is open to this new spirit and this new individual. And so I have the special ability to help a woman um, midwife herself and give birth to herself through this process and the opportunity to break chains of thinking and like releasing of shame and guilt and any of the chains that we are carrying as people of color and, and people of indigenous descent. So I'm hoping to help spring a revolution of sorts of healing and becoming healthier families and healthier generations and healthier communities through helping individuals and um, collective members understand how our our communities and our lives and our children deserve a better future than what we have been allowing through unawareness. I believe that generational trauma is 
the legacy and the patterns of behavior that we have been passing on since our one of our biggest and like original traumas, which is the um the African Holocaust, the Middle Passage, the coming of colonizers and conquistadores here over to this side of the world and creating Latino people and people who have mixed roots um, and the decimation of indigenous people. And so through that process, we have also carried the trauma that hasn't been processed, that we've never really spoken about, of the violence and the rape that's been passed through generation after generation, particularly through the women, because the women are the ones bringing in the new, new, new people to populate the world. And so I feel that it's gone on for long enough. We've been suffering from the same original wound for like over 500 years. And I believe that we can start to become aware of these patterns that we are being passed on, like alcoholism or mental health or even hypertension. Hypertension, we just say that people of color suffer from hypertension or diabetes or all these different sicknesses. These, but those sicknesses also are psychosomatic. High blood pressure would mean somebody's stressed out. Why is that person stressed out? There's all these conditions in the society set up to stress those people out. We're passing that on not just through the mother, but through our communities that are stressed out and upset and traumatized. And so my message to say, is saying that we have to start back at the root, at the foundation of family and creation of family and supporting our women through their process so that we can create healthier generations. Well, we all have the individual traumas and we have that collective trauma. And I believe that doing the healing and personal transformation work, we could have healthier communities if we start from the ground up. I myself have had my own mental health and physical health issues that I know have been passed on through my through generations of just simply being unaware and not really knowing better. And so what I've done was I, when I wrote my book, that was definitely a big part of my healing journey, but also doing the work of going to therapy and learning how to open up and talk to friends about the things that were going on and learning how to um, deal with anxiety. That's also been passed through generation to generation and how to not let that control me and yoga and breathing. And so I've been learning also to like spread that message through educating other people of that also have similar experiences because I recognize that if I'm anxious, there are other people of color anxious and we're passing that on through little children and then medicating them because they are born with ADHD and what have you. And so I advocate for it because I believe that another world is possible. I believe that another world is possible especially in my work as a midwife and an advocate for reproductive health because if I can reach a woman who is a young woman who's 13 years old or 20 years old and share with her information that she didn't get in her in her like science classes I can start to break that cycle of silence around her body and her sexuality so that she can make healthier decisions for herself and pass that on to her children and even her friends and peers. What I've realized becoming a midwife is that I'm put in a very special place in family lives and the woman's life where when a woman is pregnant, she also, all of her memories and thoughts about motherhood and her mother and her childhood are coming up. I'm in a place to influence um, and channel that thinking into something constructive, into um, something proactive instead of being stuck in those emotions, letting those emotions come up, and then also offering, how do you transcend that? How do you start these new patterns with this new person you're becoming and this new person that you're welcoming into the world? And through speaking to the, the women and to the families and allowing them the space of their, of their own journey, I'm able to start like literally taking direct action towards eradicating racism and um, internalized depression and like sexism and all of these deep um, psychological and spiritual illnesses that are plaguing our families and our family unit, which is what our community is um, foundation is made of, and start to like slowly but surely with myself and other birth workers in the world untangle those those um, chains of hatred. 
You can reach me on Facebook, Inanna Jahudi. I also have um, my website, These Waters Run Deep, which is um, a project that advocates for um, women of color and their maternal health and talking about the disparities in healthcare. So you can continue to expect articles from me on my website and also through um, keeping up with me on World Pulse, which is a website that um, is um, on the front lines of helping women become citizen journalists journalists throughout the world and hopefully in a couple um hopefully in a couple of years or a year after I'm done here I do graduate from Materia de Luz um, as a midwife next year so I'm hoping to finish my belly cast project um which is to raise awareness around um, maternal health issues for women of color and also use the knowledge that I gain to um, help women, um, younger women of color understand their bodies and um, practice as a midwife, hopefully back home on the East Coast.